We're losing likes there. By the way, I, I the, think that's because people are quitting Facebook the, because I talked them into quitting. The LRN feed is it? Is it on? Is it running? Can we hear it? Or yes, because I, I can't. I, I mute, can't hear I it. I muted it because we're on. Oh, shit. yeah, that's why. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Flaming Freedom. We're here every Sunday from 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time talking about LGBT issues from a liberty perspective. This is your host, Dale. And this is Sabriel. And Lauren. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so, wow, I was so like caught up in checking everything that I... But we're, but we're here for up, you. Stuck yeah. up on me. Lauren was paying attention. Thank goodness. So, folks... Um, Last happy week, Sunday. We, yeah. Happy Sunday. And thank you for listening to us instead of going to church. <laughs> we, we highly approve. Let me get that. Sorry. But if the, you do go to church, show is you really want up. to, we approve of that too. That sh- the, show is, I do. <laughs> the show is coming up. I always, uh, I, I frequently forget to remove that as the show is starting. So sorry about that. So today we have the obnoxious Dale cam. I don't know how this happened, but somehow there's this one that shows like me and then me again. <laughs> uh, and then a little bit of the ladies. No, who it's, are, it's a good one. And it's then not we have, obnoxious. It's nice. And we have this view that, I don't know why we haven't done this before, but this view shows everybody. Well, so if I forget anyways, to switch the cam, I can just leave it here for the whole show and there will be no disaster. But if you're listening on LRN or listening on the podcast, you can't see us. Right. So you can tune in at uh, flamingfreedom.com. It's in the left-hand side of the page. There is a link to the live video stream on the left-hand side of flamingfreedom.com. Go there and you can be watching us live. And if you aren't, if you want to watch us, but you you weren't fortunate enough to be paying attention during the live show, we are also on YouTube. With, usually within a day or two of the live show, we post on YouTube. So there's that as well. You can check it out. Yeah, this is the first time I've been on the show s- since lots of very gay things happened to me. I got, oh, I thought oh, you... Oh, yeah. Okay. I yeah, got gay married. Right. I got gay married, and I, uh, according to... A certain porcupine realtor. I'm now a real lesbian, not because of the gay marriage, but because of the mohawk. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a pretty amazing haircut. He, that, that's he, a good point. He ran into me at Porkfest and saw the mohawk, and he was like, oh, "You're a real lesbian now." I'm tweaking the volume, the levels. So those of you who think we didn't sound right, maybe we sound a little bit better now. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm just as bi as I've always been, but it's okay. I like. I, I like looking a little dikey. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 coincided with your wedding. I noticed. It, yeah, well, yeah. not the mohawk. You you did like a side shave. I did. No, what happened oh. was I did the mohawk the day the day after the wedding. I cut all my hair off. Well, not all of it, just uh, the sides, and left some on the top for a mohawk because I wanted my long flowing tresses for my bridal hair, and then I that that was it. That was. That was it. So I um, oh. I decided I wanted to see what my head looked like a while ago, but I, that I would wait until after the wedding. Oh, okay. Are you are you planning on keeping it that way? No. Or, no? Just, it I was mean, just I a like fun it. thing to try out it's for a, a while. It's a fun thing to try out, yeah. All right. All right. Well, you're officially lesbian. We'll give you the stamp of approval, <laughs> even was, if you decide not to keep that short haircut. When I first saw short it, I was like, haircut. I should get one. That is such a good haircut. It, Thank you. It looked really good. Thank you. <laughs> You are able to pull it off. I'm not sure everybody could. It's funny because it's made me more like if I mean, if as long as we're talking about gender presentation, it's made me more femme in a way, because now I have to actually style my hair in the morning Mm -hmm. Uh, instead of just putting like putting a ponytail holder in or whatever, which is what I've been doing for years. I have to gel it or I have to get it wet so that the gel wakes up and then I have to worry about like you know, my head on the car seat, smushing it down in the back. So it's like, oh, my hair, even though it's super butch now. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Oh, that's an interesting way of looking at it. It is. I'm trying to think, like, did I get more? Well, I shaved my head a few times. Yeah. Several times. Por- and por- I'm, not, I'm not a fan of it. It doesn't work out well. I have a scar from my brain stem replacement surgery and what? stuff. And, and uh, yeah, I just don't like to talk about Honestly, that's my way of ending the discussion about the scar. Because ever, you know, you ever have like something that's like a conversation piece for a moment, and then eventually it's like I'm so sick of it. Oh, don't yeah, talk sure. about it. Like of I don't course. like if you have a physical flaw of some sort, and someone keeps pointing it out, mm-hmm. it's very stressful. I, I do have a scar on the back of my head. I'm not proud of it. It's just a thing I have to. And so if I shave my head, everyone starts pointing it out to me. Um, I'm like, and 
asked me about it. I'm like, well, the way you just does it, is it, is did it, you bring is it, it up is, that way that you just said you said brain, brain stem stems, replacement which surgery, never, which only, isn't people, actually a thing. I don't, if people ask me, and that's my way of shutting them up. It's fucking rude. Oh, oh, oh it's I fucking see. rude. To right? Keep yes, asking. yes. Oh, okay. Because I've done that too about stuff. Like I'll just make up some crazy thing, so they're just like, what? Can you imagine if you had like a mastectomy or something, and yeah. someone was like constantly bringing attention to it. Like, oh, I really noticed that thing about you that you're extremely self conscious about. Like. Shut up. Wait, so it's you not appropriate. didn't have your brainstem replaced. Let's or they find on. out one thing about you and then that's they right. ask about scar, another thing that's not appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. I okay. Mean, it's not, it's like if you have an uncomfortable like memory and someone wants to keep like, oh, yeah. okay. geez. All right. So. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. I'm shaking my head. So fist. folks, if someone has a scar, don't, don't, don't make them know that you're, it's like especially attention getting. Because that's something that they're trying to deal Some with. Some people are sensitive about scars. Oh that's God. very true. <laughs> so, um, and or just sick of talking about it, one or the other. Yeah. So I wanted to, uh, let's do our Urban Dictionary Word of the Week. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, what I do you guys think? I think, I, know, I, think I, know think? I, I Our new thing now is we want to find out what people think can, it is before we tell them. Don't look, Lauren. Uh, I can't see. I can't, right. I can't read well, it. Well, she's a little close. I don't even know, okay. like... I only just know your voices. I don't know. I can't even What's see man, you. What do you think man is? Man is? Do you want to go first? Uh, no. You, can I ask for a hint first? Do you want a hint? Is it sexual? Man? Or is this just like a regular it's thing? It's some kind of, uh, it's a man barbecue. Because most of your stuff that you pick is all like. It's a man barbecue. Like, you know, like, like the Eiffel Tower. Cave, or the, the Eiffel Tower. Oh, so it's like, what? oh, it's a barbecue, but for men. So no, it's like I specifically. What do you think my, what you said most of my stuff is what? It's kind of, it's like, it's sex related, isn't it? I oh, feel like that's stuff you bring. That's because pick. of the show. Yeah. That's no, I know. Show. I know. That's why. So yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to think, is this, is this it's, really, it's, I was, she's, I, using I, thing? she's using here's context a, clues. Here's a yeah. hint. It's not particularly sex. Freedom. It's not. Related okay. This time. Man. Okay. Well, it could be if you're so into men. The hint right? is man barbecue. And man cave. Think of a man cave. What that, what that is all about. Man cave is where men go. Okay. So is a. I don't. You guess first, Lauren. <laughs> it's a barbecue with meat only. That's very good. That's actually in the definition. Is it, it's part of it. Did I get it? Pretty close. Oh. It's a more manly version of a bar. It's a, like an excessively manly version of a barbecue. No so, vegetables. <laughs> no. So oh, sausage of, only. Lots of beer and meat. Sausage is fine. Uh, it doesn't mention sausage. I'm sure that would sound gay. Like if you said it's a sausage fest. <laughs> you know I'm fond of throwing parties that are sausage fests. I call them sausage fests. Uh -huh. And then I actually have sausage. Like to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember, I remember one time Stephanie Murphy was like, Oh dear. Of, of, uh, what's her show? Pork she, therapy. She's got a, a pork number therapy. of them, but yes. If you listen to Pork Therapy, and she's also a, a, reg, a somewhat re weekly host on Free Talk Live. But, uh, Stephanie said, Oh, is it okay if I come? I'm like, Of course it's okay. If I, don't you like sausage? <laughs> when she I said, first... Yeah, I like sausage. Okay, then come to the sausage fest. <laughs> the first time I met right, her, she, she actually had a sausage right. in her hand and she gave it to me. Oh. Like before she even like shook her hand and said, hi, I'm Lauren. She actually just was like, here, have a sausage. Oh. That's how That's I a, met Stephanie Murphy. What a great way to introduce yourself, right? Here, just hand someone a sausage. sausage. Only if it's a cruelty-free, humane certified sausage. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like, oh, no, I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> here, have this. Oh, the dick jokes. Let's just get going. This relic of. Cruelty-free sausage. <laughs> That means, so, that, does that mean uncircumcised? Uh, it means, uns I, I guess, in a sexual context, it <laughs> would definitely mean uncircumcised. It would mean no BDSM. Because <laughs> even. <laughs> it would mean. <laughs> no, the stick no, has only no had CBT. loving vanilla <laughs> sex. Cruelty free means so. No, cruelty free so cruel bleh, I drank too much. Cruelty free Apparently. sausage. My so medicine no dose CBT. was too high. And no CBT if you're having cruelty-free sausage. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. So, yeah, so it's, um, here yeah. we go. Absolutely no vegetables allowed. It basically consists of a lot of beer and meat. There is usually a lot of yelling and loud music involved. A man -bicue. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Can you have onions at least? Is that, I think is that onions, acceptable? Are, are onions vegetables? Like part of the meat? Like onions, part of like tubers, a sausage or something? Count as vegetables, certainly. Is it vegetable? I thought it was tubers. So it's kind of like potatoes. Well, a ve don't vegetable count. is a culinary term, not a oh. uh, like tax a lot term. <laughs> you know what? You know the word I'm looking for. All it's, right. it's not. If a, you say so. Yeah. I think it's technically not a vegetable, but Onions, I think it's a tuber. 
Well, they, a, a no. tuber is a ve- vegetable is a culinary term. If it's used like we, a vegetable we will, in cooking, when we come back, we will not talk about this anymore. <laughs> this is Flaming Freedom, LGBT subjects approached from a liberty perspective. We'll be back in a moment, so please stay tuned. Thanks. I asked some of the biggest fans of Flaming Freedom where we discuss LGBT topics from a liberty perspective, what sorts of things they've done to support the show. I've been mining butt coins since they were pennies apiece. I've donated thousands of dollars of butt coin to Flaming Freedom. I gave Dale my handicap placard. Pretty sure that's a felony. We handed over our firstborn. I don't know what they're up to with that boy, but I'm sure it's wholesome. There's too many buttons. I don't know which button you want me to put. I told you already it's a knob. Raise the gain on microphone too, you worthless b- I have flamingfreedom.com tattooed across my labia. And I'm a prostitute, so all my clients see it. Wow, that's something. But there's a much easier way to show your appreciation. Just click like and share the episodes on your favorite social media networks. Oh, here we go with the wanting and the needing. And can you do this for me? And can you do that for me? My index mouse finger is all achy from the gout. I can't be We do put a lot of work into making a good show for you. Please, just click like and share. That's all we ask. So we are going to follow up on sex bots. A couple of episodes ago, I believe it was the episode before last, we talked about sex bots and the impact they might have. They're coming. Like, it's going to be inevitability. They're already. <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> uh, this is your host, Dale. And, and Lauren, too. Hi. Is it, did I confuse you guys? Did no, it's, you it, I, I that's chair two. This is chair three. The but, reason, you know. the reason I always went last whenever oh. I was on with you and Neil. So I'm okay. used to being. I'm you. Oh, I'm right. so You're used to. You're waiting for saying, Lauren to go. Okay. I'm waiting for Lauren. I'm sorry. I'm Lauren. sorry. I'm, I'm also thinking of like the microphone order and like the way that everything's wired. It doesn't oh, matter. So I know. Yeah, I know. On. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so that's also Sabrielle here. Um, yes, she is. And that's sex me. bots. Now they. Um, we talked about them briefly because there was an article about making them for pedophiles. And really, we never, you know, yeah. I listened to that show and we never got into the meat of the controversy, which was they were being introduced as a therapy for pedophiles. And we never really talked about that. Could they possibly make someone worse? Because aren't you trying to make them not be pedophiles anymore? If that's possible. I don't know if it's possible. It's well, no. from, from what like, I know, the from what I've but, heard once. If you intervene with a pedophile like before they actually hurt a kid, then it is possible to change them. But once they've like well, once they've crossed that line, then therapies and like and rehabilitations don't work. Okay, here's my thought. Are they suggesting that you can make them not desire kids anymore or are they suggesting that you can just change their behavior? Because uh, because we don't really control our preferences. We control our behavior. Like if I were going to hurt someone, I, I have gay, I have gay preferences, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like that can change. Mm-hmm. I, we know we actually have considerable evidence that that kind of thing can't change. Mm-hmm. But it's, but but again, that's within the realm of normal sexuality, right? To be attracted to a, adult, yeah. sexually sexually developed, right. mature yeah. uh, people. Whether it's male or female, we all have like there's the gender spectrum and your attraction to certain gender characteristics is, I think, part of the spectrum mm-hmm. of normal human sexuality. Mm-hmm. Being attracted to kids, I don't feel like falls under the normal spectrum of human sexuality. It, it, it's, it seems Unless like a disorder to me. Yeah. And and Ooh. go ahead, Lauren. I think that the, there's like, isn't it neoteny? Isn't that like a thing? And I feel like yeah, for a lot there's of men, that. there's that. Right? But isn't like, that part of maybe because, there's like a. Girl writes what, for instance, talks about how how women exhibit a greater degree of neoteny than men, but the, and and the human race actually has become has exhibited more neoteny overall over a period of time, and that's basically a lack of significant differentiation between adults and children in a species. It's significant enough for most people. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's significant enough that pedophilia still seems like a disorder, like it's a malfunction. Yeah, yes. and and what you know, of course, what matters is whether they actually act on it. If like. Because what I was talking about during that show was you can have someone who is a pedophile and realizes they're a pedophile, but knows that they're not supposed to act on that. Yeah. And they choose and they choose not to act. on Yeah. It. And, right. And, and, you and, know, and I think what Sabriel said earlier, though, is that once they do act on it, there's no going back and there's no like rehabilitating or sure no. I don't know. I honestly yourself, don't know. But like, I've been told that that is a m- myth. OK. I, that, that, that's... that actually re- that actually if someone is caught, like like if someone actually does act on it, but they get caught. Mm-hmm. And then they, they go to court and, and possibly they might go to jail or they might go to 
therapy or both, probably both. And then they get on a sex offender registry, and that's to protect children. I, I understand the motivation of it. I don't necessarily think they're very effective, but th- all this stuff happens to try and keep the, And my understanding is they actually have a very low recidivism rate. But really? there's such that's a there's hear. a perception that is distorted because people hate them so much. I understand why people hate them. We're protective of our children. It's yeah. understandable. But but uh, but there's this perception that if we don't hate them enough. We won't protect our children, but I don't necessarily think that's the best way to protect our children. Maybe the best way to protect our children is being able to have a discussion about it, figure out what's going on, and figure out a way to stop them from actually getting to children or whatever. Yeah. And so, uh, and so then the question about sex bots was introducing them as therapy sounds weird. Like, my thought is if you give a, a sex bot that's a, a, a child looking robot or something to a pedophile, then. The idea would be not to cure them or whatever, but just to keep them away from real children. Yeah. To protect real children. And, and, and yep, you could just do it with that and stay away from the kids. So I, I think <laughs> we probably all agree that it's weird, but it's still <laughs> yes. an option. And I don't, yeah. I don't know if it makes sense. I don't, I'm but... not sure either. But that brought it, anyway, but so anyway, that was, the, that's the pedophile discussion that I felt was <laughs> left out. But we didn't talk about, is this actually going to make them worse and maybe a little more inclined to then move on to real children? Yeah, and which is completely counter to the point of it, or it depends on whatever. how convincing the robot is. If the robot is so convincing that they can't tell, and maybe they yeah. think it is, and then they have this like little secret life by themselves, <laughs> then yes. maybe that'll work. And then the other problem with that is, what if that? So, what if the robot is up. so convincing because it actually has like thoughts and free will? And at that point, no. are you actually violating the rights of the robot? Yes, yes, you are. But a robot can't have free will. I don't. Agree. I think, I think it can. I, I, we're just not there yet. We're just the technology mm. there. We are robots. We're we're just squishy, liquid robots with very elaborate, really elaborate will. Is my okay. thought. Our motivations are very elaborate, which makes them difficult to predict. But I feel like we are basically squishy, liquid robots. You're probably right. <laughs> I just don't want to admit it. We just haven't made robots advanced enough. They're going to be smarter than us eventually. And they're going to replace us. I think it's just, or we'll merge with them. Like we will move on and become robots ourselves. I just like to point out that I'm actually more than a robot too. But I do agree with you. Yes, I am a robot. However, (laughs) but more than a robot. I am also more than a a robot robot plus. Yes, I am. But now let's move on to this week's discussion, which I thought was interesting because I I ran across a couple of things, which is a follow up on sex bots. I found a couple of great comic. I found a cartoon by Saturday morning breakfast cereal where the robots got smarter than us and analyzed our emotional reactions and everything and decided that we aren't really capable of love. Oh, my God. <laughs> they're like, uh, you're not actually capable of love. <laughs> and they're explaining this to humanity. And uh, <laughs> there's that side of it. And the other one is, will sex bots end human progress? Is that the what, one, that's the one that's the Futurama yes. link, where it's just like everything stops because we're all just like, yep, I'm totally satisfied now. Right. We're, we're good. I, but, it's so much. Uh, there's a there's an argument to be made that so much of human motivation is all about trying to be impressive to the opposite sex. Yes. In but one way, shape then or form. One, once you. Yeah, I guess. But uh, yes, ultimately, from an evolutionary standpoint, I agree. But from a from the viewpoint of a human being, then definitely not like sex all day would just get boring. Hmm. But it, that's even, no, you wouldn't have really sex all day. Sex you wouldn't have sex one. all day because we have limited right uh, capacity for that. Men have a certain amount of semen, and when we've ejaculated a certain number of times, we don't want to for a long time. That's called the refractory period. But and people. I don't know about women, but I'm sure there's also you know you're sick of it. You've had enough. You're satisfied, yeah, right, biologically. But it's not just that. But it's like, but there's the rest of the time. So much of what we do is trying to get a partner impressed with us. Is to get a partner to see us as a valuable mate. Like yeah. guys, if you but want to look at like really tra- without sex, like there are people who aren't that sexual. In fact, the, la- the it has nothing to do with sex. It has to do with wanting a partner to be interested in you. Oh, but it and does. That's much it more, does. And it's so much beyond sex. Oh, that is so much, so much beyond sex. So okay. when we come back, we'll talk about about how how much of our motivation is tied into impressing a partner. This is Flaming Freedom, LGBT Issues from Liberty Perspective. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Flaming Freedom, where we talk about LGBT issues from a Liberty Perspective. And sometimes we're just LGBT libertarians who shoot the poop. Kind of like right now, we're talking about sex bots and whether they 
might result in the downfall of humanity <laughs> because what you know, it, it depends on how much you believe that human motivations for progress come from trying to impress the opposite sex. Yeah, well, I think it, that's certainly a, a baseline like that is what, because we have to make more humans. We have to reproduce. That's why we exist in the DNA configuration we exist in is so that we right. can put, move our genes Things forward. that have helped us to survive have been favorable traits. And right. Those are what people look for. Right. And to some extent, I wonder, like, how much of that is lingering and no longer relevant? Like, how much can a man fight off a saber-toothed tiger, <laughs> you know, to protect his yeah. wife and kids from the saber-toothed tiger? And he had to be like this rippling, muscly, hairy <laughs> mass with giant fists and he could just grab the tiger by the tusk and like slam it against a boulder and like now my wife and child are safe and my genes shall continue right uh, and then uh and then you know the woman meanwhile had to have like enormous breasts to like breastfeed like three children at once and i don't know whatever it is that that people that needed. hand motion you just made it was very Sorry. frightening well thank goodness that people those of you who didn't get to see the hand motion you should watch us on youtube or on that was YouTube more like Live. a fire hose not breasts <laughs> Well, I'm I'm thinking cave women with like cave women. Actually, impressive. the size of your breasts does not affect milk production very much. I mean, if you have like itty bitty like Make it mosquito, technical. Sorry, you know, I'm yeah, just, no, I'm kidding. no, this is great. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy that you're here because like a lot yeah. of times, like it would be always Dale and Neil being like, yeah, like breasts. They're they're kind of like uh, turtles, right? <laughs> and it's like what? No, I am no, really the a, wrong person. Yeah. I am the wrong person to consult about. The technical aspects of breasts and everything. I, Although, I, I have to say I'm objective to in a sense because I look at them and I go, oh, baby feeders. Whereas uh -huh. other guys look at them and go, just, they're just yeah, not that's, that's rational. A good perspective. They yeah. can't be rational about yeah. them. So, Yes. Well, anyway, for those who care <laughs> about the effect, uh, about the size of breasts and their ability to feed children, as long as you're not like 100% flat, then you can you can feed babies just fine, no matter how big your boobs are. Yeah, yes. and, and and they're going to get a little bigger for when you have a baby, right. and they're mm -hmm. going to continue to produce as much as the baby needs, for the most part, unless there's yes. something unusual going on. So. Right. And with modern medicine, there's all kinds of ways to fix uh, a lack of milk production, even in men, too. We can Anoxious talk about that some other time. There it is. There Anoxious you are. Del Cam. Okay. Sorry, uh, I thought you were done. I, I, I timed that, so like right as you were finished talking, and then it didn't work. So. Oh, all right. okay. That's okay. We like looking so, at you, though. You're cool. Anyway, I think that yes, from a human race perspective, we want to mate, we want to make more humans. But from an individual perspective, it becomes so much more complicated. I do not think that sex robots would end the human race. You, <laughs> no. you still have well. so many drives. You have the drive to create not just babies, but like art and wealth in all of its myriad forms and but there's the argument that those things are largely driven as a way to impress a potential partner now right. that's more but than you sex can have involved partners you can have you can be married and not have sex in fact there's plenty of married couples that don't have sex okay that's the little point lauren's trying to make and so even if you have a sex bot and the sex bot satisfies you sexually then you're saying well we still want a mate though we still want a partner uh-huh Right. Uh, who is meaningful to us in ways beyond the sex. Or even if you're an asexual person, you still want so that to have means... a partner. You want to have friends who like you for who you are. So then the, so then the guys are still going to go to college and try to become good providers and all that in order to attract a partner as opposed to just a sex partner. Or, and yes. some people, I mean, yes, but I'm, what I'm saying is that people still want to be, even somebody who is getting like, all of their emotional needs met by a partner might still want or, or physical needs. I can still imagine somebody who still wants to be like, say, rich and famous, for example. A sex bot is not going to make you rich and famous. You're not going to have millions of crowds screaming right. your name. You're not going to have power over others. So those are still drives that human and you beings don't think have. that that is largely to impress someone of the opposite I gender. think on an evolutionary scale yes but on okay. a personal scale no I think that uh -huh. those drives exist independently okay those are our opinions I, I'm, I'm I am inclined to think more and more that we, we so much of our motivations come from that impressing the opposite gender and one of the things that I think or the about, same gender you were well, talking to Dale oh the same gender exactly <laughs> well, exactly then, I feel whoever like, it is that you're trying to impress right my motivation doesn't come from trying to impress the opposite gender because I don't know what that is. 
So I, <laughs> I can say personally, well, whoever, firsthand, that, that that's not a motivating factor uh, for as, everyone. As Sabriel just pointed out, whoever it is that you're right. interested in appealing, being appealing to, hmm. you're trying to be this kind of person that other people are impressed by, or, you know, there's that social pressure to be whatever beyond what you would just be by your personal motivations. What made me think of this to some extent was there was a recent SLA, uh, Sex, Lies, and Anarchy, by the way, for those of you uh, who are wondering what SLA means. That's another show that I like, and Antigone is on there most regularly, and you're on there sometimes, Lauren, and you talked I, about... I'm occasionally yeah, you're, on That's where too. I first heard your voice was on that show. It was you, on SLA. You mm-hmm. talked about the men going their own way movement and these are guys who have kind of written off dating in any kind of significant degree that some of them might have sex some of them don't have written off sex as well but they're just like i'm just going to live my life for me and shrug and and shrug off these social pressures to be a traditional man mm-hmm. which is like oh go out and be the provider go get married have kids and all these expectations on guys to live a very certain lifestyle mm-hmm. well, i think you could relate to that Sariel, just sort of breaking away from a traditional expectation yeah. of your lifestyle Uh Because it's a great expression. And gender roles, also gender roles, right? Uh, I don't know if all the MGTOW, the MGTOWs are very much happy that they're, that's MGTOW, MGTOW. That's the acronym is MGTOW or MGTOW. Most of them, I think, are very happy with their masculinity. However, they're, yeah, they just want to be independent. It's actually a really great expression of uh, self-ownership, I'd say. Yeah. I I mean, on some level, I see that because, uh, and I felt like uh, that, um, that, I, I, sometimes I felt like Antigone kind of missed what they're really all about is that sort of acknowledging that it doesn't that lately that stuff doesn't pay off a lot of times because of the state's involvement and courts and and child custody issues and alimony and all that stuff. So they've written it off for those reasons and mm-hmm. that they might, you know, if, if not for that, they might be they might not otherwise do that. Yes, so, that's a good point. And she's like calling them, oh, they're just shallow and me- and not interested in meaningful relationships. Well, they're, they're, so. they're hurt by the, the, the weird constructs of the society. It's Right. Yeah, but that makes me wonder. But here's the thing. Fault. A lot of them have said, like, uh, you know, now that I don't have, now that I've decided to reject these social pressures, I'm not all that interested in getting a, a power job and making a lot of money and trying to, I'm not out to impress people. I want to make enough money to do the things I enjoy doing. I want to play video games and I want to hang out with my friends and go see sports. And I want do to be like happy. That. Yeah, I want to be happy. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean busting my ass in the rat race. Yeah. Right? Right. So um, so that's what, it, it, looking at that movement and how it's growing and, and seeing the sort of social ramifications of it makes me wonder how much of, of the rat race is just trying to impress people, like trying to impress the opposite mm-hmm. sex or, or, or the same sex or whatever. Right. Or both. Yes, both. Well, oh, yeah, uh, that works too. Sabriel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe, but maybe sex bots will do, will chisel away at it. But like Lauren said, there's more to relationships, obviously, than sex. So. Yeah. Maybe someone will donate, and then we can get our own sex bot and see if we like to we still do the show. Test By the our way, I'm a, I'm kind of becoming a gay MGTOW. M- MGTOW? Yeah, I, oh, like I gay, think... Not, not for them. GMTO? Mento? <laughs> gay MGTOW. I'm oh not sure. God. GMT. <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, it's at all related, though. It's not for the same reasons, because I don't feel like gay people are penalized in any way by the system, uh, because marriage is still not really expected of us and all that stuff. I kind of understand that guy who called in and said marriage was a, a horrible, bad thing, and gay people should not want to be dragged into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, <laughs> um, but, so how uh, are you a MGTOW? I think I've kind of given up on trying to have a like a a a, a monogamous relationship set up, mm. right? There's still pressure on gay people. Like that's what you're. That everyone the is, relationship escalator. Everybody's the, uh, expected to get on the relationship escalator. Yeah. yeah, and you're expected to find this one person who's more meaningful than anyone else and share your life and Who live with them. Completes you. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm buying into that anymore, mm-hmm. and it's such a relief. Flaming Freedom will be back in a moment. Stay tuned. Good morning, folks. You are listening to Flaming Freedom, where LGBT libertarians shoot the poop, talk about sex bots, pedophiles, things like that, <laughs> and whatever it ma- just whatever your, makes just you your most average un- regular stuff on a Sunday morning. You know, right. pedophile sex bots. Whatever makes you most uncomfortable, Ooh, we will find that subject uh-huh. and talk about it. So, do you see what I just what I just did? I reversed it. I was I said pedophile sex bots. Pedophile. That would be weird. That, that would be that so would be, bad. That we do not need. That would be like the most Nazi invention. Like just robots that would go out and rape children. Like that would be their whole purpose. 
Pedophile sex bots. This show is terrible. That would be right like now. worse I cannot than handle the Terminator. It. That'd be worse than the Terminator. Yeah, movies. let's not. Can we? <laughs> you, <laughs> you see what? I, do you see what I just did? You brought it. I up. brought that idea into the world. Oh, you did. No. You just I feel really bad. Now that's like, that's gonna be a horror no, movie. I feel terrible now. There's gonna be a guy that invents. I'm gonna write that movie. <laughs> oh my god! The guy who invents pedophile sex bots. <laughs> this is terrible. Jesus. I'm so sorry. <laughs> With gigantic. Uh, Dale, stop but, uh, right now. Okay, stop sorry. right now. <laughs> I just want to make people as uncomfortable as we possibly can. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, we're moving on to supernatural, sexy supernatural shipping shenanigans. Shipping shenanigans. Yeah. Yay. I knew Lauren. I knew, not Lauren. I knew that uh, Sabriel would like this topic. Yay. Sabriel does like this topic. There. We should have a supernatural uh, viewing party sometime because I, I haven't we've seen done any that. of it. Where were you? We did Here? that. We, at your, at yeah, your place we did it very. Studio? We did it very briefly. Uh, a friend, uh, another friend of ours, Je- Jesse, no, Jessica, yeah. Jessica, sorry, Jessica, and I introduced Sabriel and Caitlin and Neil. And supernatural. Now. Yeah. And now you're now you're hooked. I am totally hooked. <laughs> did you go all the way to the beginning and watch? Yep. Okay. So now you're caught up. Yeah. Nice. What is the premise of the show in like 30 okay, seconds? Okay, the premise of the show is that two brothers have to fight demons and uh, supernatural entities that hurt humans. Vampires, they drive, they drive werewolves. around the country battling the forces of evil. Wow. A bunch of made-up monsters That's that I've cool. never heard of. Yeah. Too. And it gets steadily more complicated as the show goes on. And there's a lot of relationship drama between yeah. brothers and lovers. Between the brothers and, and angels. Their and... friends and angels and demons and such. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of drama. It, it, it's got action drama. It's, it's everything amazing. you want. Amazing. It's primarily popular with middle-aged married women <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> Um, Do you know that for real, or are you I, just guessing? Jessica told me that. That m- married women specifically? Yeah. I think it's popular with women. M- maybe so, <laughs> but like for well, some Dale reason... Well, is a lesbian, so... I'm a lesbian in a gay man's body, so I feel like I know what I'm talking about here. Mm-hmm. No, I don't, probably don't really know what I'm talking about, but that's what I heard Jessica say. Like, if you go to a supernatural convention, I've never gone. I don't think I could stomach. I've seen lots of videos. Going to one. Yeah, I've watched some all videos. Wi- it's all women. It's like 1% yeah. men and 99% women. Really? Yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah. Would you, would you, it, it, this is the hard course. Like, that doesn't mean that the show isn't popular right. to a broad, I think it is popular to a broad spectrum of people. The because people it's, who go to a convention are different from your average fan. They're, they're willing the to spend course. a lot of time and money on their they're like the groupies of a band. Yes. The band actually has a lot of fans, right? And I think right. Supernatural probably has a broad spectrum of the fan base and watch and viewers because it's got action and monsters and magic and hot guys and fast cars and <laughs> you know, it's got yeah. a lot of elements that would appeal to a lot of people, but when you want to when you want people who show up at the conventions and just barrage the actors and writers and such with questions and think too deeply about the show far too deeply about the show that's middle-aged married women apparently <laughs> go figure hmm. so supernatural shipping shenanigans this is hard i apologize this is not new okay but a lot of people don't know about this because when i talked about supernatural shipping and whether or not they were queer baiting we talked about yeah. that in the show. Someone on that thread, on a Reddit thread, where I posted that, the thread got a lot of upvotes. A lot of people are interested in the subject. The video got a lot of views that, of our show. That was a, that view. That video probably got five times, ten times an average show's viewing on YouTube. From Which video? The one that queer what? baiting supernatural one. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not too surprising. <laughs> so, uh, so that was interesting to me. And then I, there was a thread on read it about it discussing the subject and there was one person on there who got very upset at the notion and sort of debunked the notion that they're queer baiting and said no 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 misha specifically queer baits uh no the other guys don't no no the oh, right, right? This, is, no. this is what this is about this is, okay this is your chance to, to okay. show your thoughts on this as well okay no so that was their thought was that if you look and here's and and this is um this article I mean, I could try and dig up that Reddit that thread. I'm a little leery of trying to do that right now. But this article also kind of addresses that, like Misha specifically and things he's done to to stoke the fires of the 
of like Castiel. And, okay, he first of all, uh, Ka- we, Ka- uh, Destiel. Destiel sorry. Misha doesn't need to stroke the fires. The <laughs> fires will burn forevermore, whether Misha strokes them or not. Misha is a delightful man and is very lgbt friendly he's just like a plain yep. good person so i think i agree to accuse him of queer baiting is assigning um malicious intent where there simply cannot be malicious intent not that he's like a saint or anything but he's a really good guy okay you can let, tell. let me read a little of this and okay. let you respond right. to it so misha collins uh seems to like slash his slash fans are unhappy about this so the actor who plays castiel from supernatural who's an angel, by the way, spoiler alert, is known for being supportive of Slash and also for being a giant troll. Misha shook up the Supernatural fandom late October. By the way, this article's from 2012, just so you know. November. And in late October, when he told a small group of fans at Supernatural Convention in Chicago that he thought Dean and Castiel were in love, an opinion he apparently formed without discussing it with anyone on set. (laughs) Uh, It may be unspoken, but that doesn't mean it's not there, he explained. And when a fan asked why it couldn't just be a bromance, Misha just shrugged. Of course, Dean cast fans were, Dean slash cast fans were delighted that Misha had apparently joined their ranks. And some went so far as to say that Misha's statement made Dean slash cast canon. And for people who, might not understand that term. That means that the writers are in on it. That mm-hmm. they're playing, you know, that's intentional, as opposed to fans interpreting it that way. But did it start that way? The, I, I'm not a, a, a viewer of this program. This so is I the don't controversy really... that we're discussing. So we don't, I don't so know. We don't, and, and so no. the premise is it's huge controversy. So you right? say no. Do you say yes? I to? say I think probably not. No, the no. writers are in. Uh, okay, so no, it just started out because they needed a character to bring Dean out of hell and to get the brothers into this whole. Oh, God, oh, so many spoilers for Lauren now that you're planning on watching the show, but this is old <laughs> yeah, news. For I usually everybody. don't like to get spoilers, I, I can, but this has been it. out for a while, it. so it's, I'm it not going yes. to apologize for this. If you're not watching the show, that's your fault. Oh, right, so they just needed somebody to tie the brothers into the Hell versus Heaven showdown. So that was Castiel, but obviously there, be, there became quite a lot of, like, tension and chemistry of you know uh, whether it's a bromance chemistry or something else there's a lot of chemistry between uh the between dean and Cass. so the fans started saying it started you know shipping them together and then the writers were like oh okay sure and started with the queer baiting now misha i don't think i think that misha sees the potential and he is, <laughs> I mean, he's an actor. He sees all of the possibilities because that's part of what you have to do to be an actor. You have to be able to take it anywhere. You are yeah. beholden to the writers. So if the writers are going to queer bait and then pull back and be like, oh, no, of course, Dean is 100 percent heterosexual, then Misha still has to be on the show and still has to be there. So by the way. What? Oh, it just inspired me. There's been a lot of there's a lot of gay jokes because the brothers they're brothers. Yeah, mm-hmm. was, that's what I was gonna ask. But they hang like, out together are, all the time. Brothers. They rent hotel rooms together and things like that. So it's not shocking. I, I like that the writers incorporated that people assume they're gay sometimes. That they're not. Bro- they don't know they're brothers. They think they're a gay couple. Yeah. And then that it makes Dean very uncomfortable. It does make Dean very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, understandably. That was also a, a lot of the a lot of and gay the- stuff in general makes Dean uncomfortable. But he's not like a he's not a bigot. Like he he doesn't he knows that he's not supposed to feel uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Like in his head, he's like, oh, I'm not supposed to be that way, but it's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, and. And so, that makes me, the, the, but the, but usually when someone's really uncomfortable about something, I'm like, that's an insecurity of some sort. That is one of the things that fans point to. That on might the show. mean yeah. you're a little bit turned on and you don't like that you're a little bit turned on. Not yes. by his brother, I'm sorry, but just by the gay subject. Right, by the gay right. subject, right. Yeah, anyway, so, and did I talk about on the, the last time we discussed this, how how Misha made a video of him with DSL sausage yes, and then I shipping it to link. Jensen You Apple. didn't watch that video, did you? No, I didn't. I, I put some footage of okay, that. Okay, yeah, so. You got to go to the Flaming Freedom YouTube channel, which is linked from our show page in many places. If mm-hmm. you click on any video, that'll take you to our YouTube channel and watch that. Yes, so uh, the fact that Misha we, has stated that Dean and Cass are in love does not surprise me. Ah, All right, we'll talk some more about it when we come back. The second hour is Blaming Freedom is coming up. Please stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. We are in the second hour of the show. There's, By the way, you can call in. I We don't 
it's not much of a call-in show. It is technically a call-in show. If you have thoughts you want to share, we highly encourage you to do so. You can Skype us at In Your Head Shows. Log into Skype. Skype the account, In Your Head Shows, all one word. And we'll hear what you have to say. You can change the subject, too. You don't have to talk about what <laughs> yeah. you're talking about. Uh, yeah, we're, we're very happy to be a call-in show, but it's, yeah. it's not the main focus of us right uh, Well, now. just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's totally, it, the option is always there for you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all I want to say. That's nice. So uh, I found the thread on Reddit, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, we do, in the interest of being concise, I will get on. Here's a little bit of what Misha said. He was being interviewed about the whole shipping thing. And the interviewer said, you joke about this a great deal. He goes, I don't joke, but go on. <laughs> and it, says, oh yes, Misha never jokes wait, about is anything. Is Misha the writer? No, or the director. Misha plays Misha plays <laughs> Cass or Cass. He plays one of the characters that people see okay. as being possibly gay. Well, first of all, these two characters have like pretty pretty femme names, and they're both okay. men. Dean? Cass and Dean. Dean? Cass and Dean. Is Dean is not femme well, Dean, at all. Or Dean's kind of gay. Uh, I get a gay vibe from Dean. Maybe for being <laughs> hyper masculine. Yeah, that's a hyper masculine. Right. So they like they have the Sam has accused Dean of being a little butch, trying too hard. Yeah, I think was the word. Yeah, yeah. was the expression. Interviewer asked him, uh, "You joked about this yesterday at the panel, including saying that this season would be the season where Dean figures out that he's a bottom." <laughs> with his brother? <laughs> no, is, no. Again, no. this is two years oh. ago. Not with his brother. Oh, I feel like we're gonna be. Do we need to spend a little time setting you up so that we? Because <laughs> I feel like we're confusing you a great deal by. We just need, moving no, forward. I, know. I think I represent like the listeners you do, who, kind who of, are kind are, of just like, really oh, I haven't do. seen this yet. These are, but this, uh, that's a good point. Like we know we're, people are really lost maybe because we're talking about this and they don't know. Dean is one no, of the main it, it characters. It makes sense. We're I, just, I just wish I had the background. That's oh, okay. You're right though. Dean and Dean, Sam are the brothers. They're the main characters in the show. They were the, they were the focus of slashers slash shippers in seasons one through three. Yes. Then Cass came Despite on. Despite being brothers. Yes. Then because they are both beautiful, <laughs> it is a big part of it. And also they had no personal lives whatsoever and spent all their time together. Yeah. So then season four, Castiel, the angel, rescues Dean from hell. It's a very romantic beginning for a relationship. And from then on, uh, people who are uncomfortable with incest, <laughs> but still <laughs> yeah. like Slash, had a had a pairing to ship in Dean and Castiel. So Dean, the main character, one of the main characters, and Castiel. <laughs> did that help at all? Lauren is laughing. Yes, it did. And no, Castiel's it makes perfect an angel. sense now. Okay. Castiel's an angel who's like inhabiting an a human angel body. Of the Lord with a very okay. deep. I'm gonna voice. have dreams about. So this here's now. Misha, the play- oh, guy who plays the angel, tell and he's me the all one who dreams. eggs people on. They say. So, uh, so he said that, and then he said something about Dean figuring out he's a bottom, and then, <laughs> and Misha said, yeah, sort of, and the interviewer said, sort of? He says, well, what I Ted said technically was, we learned definitively that Dean is a bottom <laughs> in purgatory, but yeah. See, here's the thing, Misha jokes a lot. Yes. He is not a serious person. <laughs> yes. His Twitter is hilarious. <laughs> you should be subscribed to his Twitter. If not, you are, you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. Right, so um, then he goes on. Uh, then the interviewer says, thanks for being specific for me. And Misha says, I mean, not to correct you, but you were wrong. And the interviewer says, it seems like any, especially in sci-fi, any show that has strong male characters in that relationship, going back to Kirk and Spock, Misha says, starting with Kirk and Spock. <laughs> right. There always seem to be some undertones even if it's not intentional to some degree misha says no but weirdly i think we all dial into that fan base sort of tip our hats all the time like we know it's there and we subtly allude to the fan base and their affinity to that sort of homoerotic tension and the interviewer says funny thing is a lot of fan fiction is written by women and misha says most of it uh most homoerotic slash fiction about two male characters is written by heterosexual women not to, you know, school you. <laughs> and, he, and the guy says, I was aware of this. And Misha says, I don't pretend to be able to explain it. Um, and then he ends the, uh, Misha ends it with, I love penises. So <laughs> now I understand where, where Savio's talking about that uh, he doesn't seem completely and totally straight. But then he's also just poke. He has a lot he, of Well, fun, just because so you love penis, penises doesn't mean you're not straight. Right. Most men still love at least for- one. <laughs> Most guys oh, right, like their own? love at least one. Yeah. Oh. They love so that I was one a never lot. straight. Okay, yeah. Good. I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're never straight. So this person uh, who's disputing the 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 video, they watched our show. 
And they said, I'm pretty sure most of the people that stopped watching Supernatural in seasons, this is the Reddit thread, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Who stopped okay. watching in six or seven, Ooh. season six or seven, did it because most of the storylines uh, were not engaging them. And not because of queer baiting, but if anyone is guilty of queer baiting, it's Misha. He's pretty much the only person that fans the flames of that nonsense. Wait, nonsense. Okay. That's their wording. Okay, but what? I, I'm confused because by nonsense, do you mean slash shipping or by nonsense, do you mean queer baiting? Because there are two ways to interpret that comment. They're saying queer baiting. They're accusing Misha of queer baiting. Okay, you, but Misha does not write the show. He just says, I mean, he but says if, his, li- right, the writers but he knows are the queer not, If he knows the writers do not intend that, and he goes out and says that. Well, have you read he, the script? He maybe, he's, maybe he's ad-libbing some queerness. <laughs> I mean, what is the right, I'm, I'm sure the writers have told him, Misha, <laughs> this is not happening in the show. I just want to be clear on that. This guy seems what actually... What if they've told him that? Like, I can see that. I could totally see that conversation happening. And then, I can see it happening, too, and I can, can still it, see but, him you know. kind of doing his own yeah. thing. I mean, yes, of course, there's a lot of leeway with body language and facial expressions and exactly how long they hug when they reunite and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, no, I think yeah. I think that there's... Okay, there's even a line. One of the other angels says to Dean, I think you're confusing me with the other angel, you know, the one who's in love with you. That that, ah. is, that is a line <laughs> That's true. that, 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 that one of the true, other yes. angels says. So it's not like Misha is the only... It, that, right. is that is a really that sounds gay like line. queer baiting to me. Like, how do you deny queer baiting when, someone, when they put that line in the well, show? Well, it's only queer baiting if they're never going to deliver. And they're never going to deliver. Right. I, I think don't think it's safe to, to say. I don't think they're so going. that could be a line that's like, I mean, you can you can walk the you can walk that line and sort of and let fans think what they want. But then if you well, go, what if, tell, what if they say like they say, no guys, look, we're having fun with this, but it's not. It's not happening. I, Wait, yeah. is it still queer baiting then? I, I, it is Lauren, still has, Lauren has a question. The, this okay. show is still going on, right? Yes. So, I mean, there's, it's going to maybe have like a it's season finale. It's going on. Like, eventually, it, it may end, coming up. right? Yes. Maybe, but and season so, 10 is coming up. So, like, they'll have some like last episode where they say the network isn't going to support us anymore. We're off the air. Let's just do it. <laughs> that would be, like, right? That would, that be, would be pretty be awesome. awesome. But so I, that still could happen. I, there's could, still hope. It, there's it always, not just be back off a little. Oh, sorry. It's okay. There's a little bit of There is always hope, but. I think that Jensen and Jared, who are the actors who play the brothers, especially Jensen, has made comments that he doesn't like the Slash stuff. Mm. And it's like, Jensen, just shut your pretty mouth, okay? Yeah, yeah. We don't care if you like it or not. Like, you, you we are the well, here's, customers. Here's <laughs> someone who I think you can relate to who responds to this person in the thread. Calling it nonsense, nonsense is part of the overall problem I have with the fandom in general and this and the supernatural thread in Reddit in particular. Misha is absolutely lovely to his fan base and smart enough not to alienate a good chunk of the show's fans. Yeah. Jensen is the one who hasn't quite figured out diplomacy with shipping. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. I, for some. Yeah. I think that some people that some actors, not not just on Supernatural, but in general, they see they see alternate interpretations as threats, and that's one of the reasons that authors and create and creators of media um, that some of them don't like fan fiction or fan art at all because they think, no, this is mine. If you are mm. writing, if you're playing in my world, then you're. It's like it's. Uh, it's like an assault. It's kind of like a, a copyright way. infringement of, of it, sorts. Yeah, almost. It or feels this is my creative exactly. baby. It feels icky to them if you're not playing. You're, you're like a pedophile sex bot raping my baby, <laughs> right? That's what it is. You're a pedophile sex bot raping my baby. I'm so sorry that I ever brought that up. <laughs> it, it does make. It does make. That's going to be the name of this YouTube j- yeah. movie show, uh, video now. <laughs> you're a pedophile sex pedophile? bot raping my baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You know what? I, those those titles don't work. They don't get it. Uh, no, you think they I, might, well, I wouldn't share yeah. that on Facebook. I have no. family on Facebook. Right, right. Anyway, so yeah. Well, I had the one called. There's one of our videos is called. Is it still cannibalism if you only eat vegans? And that hasn't been that popular at all. It hasn't worked. <laughs> all right, folks. We'll be right back. Flaming freedom. We're going to discuss more of this uncomfortable stuff when we come back. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> 
Queer baiting on Supernatural. This was a hot topic, and some more information has come up since the show where we discussed it a few weeks ago. This is your host, Dale. And Lauren and as well. And Sabriel will be back in a moment. She is with us. I, at the risk of talking about stuff that Sabriel will not hear and be able to respond to, well, let's get your thoughts on this, Lauren, as a more okay. objective person, because Sabriel's very invested. I'm not an objectivist. Let's be You're clear about that. more objective on this I might subject. be very objective, but I'm yes. not an objectivist. No, no. I'm not an objectivist. I know that's not what you call me, but I just want to clarify for no, the no. listeners. I'm not... Right. This is not Neil speaking There's a right difference now. between libertarian and objectivist. There's a lot of similarity and overlap, mm. but you can be one and not be the other, definitely. I consider myself objectivist-ish, but we digress. Back on topic. Objective. But you are objective about this subject because you're not so I will try my best. You've never watched objective. the show. You never watched the show. No, not even once. Never even seen. I don't even know what these people look like. Okay. I have no clue. Okay, I'm going to show you what they look like. They're no, I, I, I'm on Twitter so I can look it up. Okay, look up look up Supernatural and look at the um, main in characters. In fact, this uh, Misha person, he, uh, he yeah, he is, he is. Right, right? He's very lovely. Um, and the he, two main he, characters are very lovely He as seems well. like a cool person. I mean, he's, he's chatting back and yeah. forth with William Shatner. And it's like this, he's a, it's a cool person to follow on Twitter. Yes, um, yes. So tell me, go ahead. So the next person in this thread says, uh, in response to this person says, this is the, this is the, this is the person who, doesn't buy into the queer baiting and is annoyed by people who do all the shipping stuff. Okay. Right. Oh, cool. So Sabriel's back. I wanted you to hear this, Sabriel, but um, I want to hear Lauren's opinion as a more objective viewpoint mm. as well. So this is a, uh, this person says, this is the same person who I started out with says those fans that get alienated are big babies. <laughs> so he's talking about you, <laughs> he or she. I'm, I'm saying she because it's supernatural. So, um, how dare Jensen say Dean isn't in love with Cass? It's not like he would know anything about how he's playing his character for the last nine years. Oh, this show's been on for a while. Yeah, it's on tenth wow. season is coming. It's about up. to start the tenth season. It's super. Uh, I successful. should totally quit my job and just watch shows. Yeah. <laughs> No. The entitlement of the Destiel shippers is astounding. He doesn't need to be diplomatic about crap. I don't know how much more respectful he could have been when he finally shot down Destiel ever becoming canon. Again, Misha is the only one fanning the flames, and he clearly does it because he knows he can get a reaction. He's the biggest, really only baiter. If the only reason someone is watching Supernatural is because of the made-up fan fiction in their head and have since quit because Jensen said it would never happen, well, good riddance. Okay, well, <clears throat> what I have to say to that is it's not that, <sighs> look, I wish that, auth that authors and creators and actors could all be a little more, if not like Misha, if not intentionally getting buddy-buddy with the fans, at least tolerate other interpretations, because that's just part of human creation and human creativity is that I'm with everybody, you there. everybody yeah. is going to have a different take on it and 50 shades of gray is totally a redoing of twilight yeah and look how super popular famous it is and it's a new work and it, it, even though it's it's, it's totally ripped off of essentially wait, it, it it's is? now a new work it started that people out, are interested in it, 50 so. shades of gray started out as twilight fan fiction and then okay. the author was like wait are you serious yes really you're he changed absolutely the names serious. he got rid of the overt things so about vampires started, and werewolves he put it in a mundane they put it in a mundane world was she ever a writer in some of the slash fiction um, like twilight stuff oh obviously you don't need to have it, it. well 50 shades of gray isn't slash first of all well, no, but I mean, like, it ev but it evolved, right? Because it's from based that? on characters who actually are. This is, this are in is love new with news for me. Oh, this is a big canon. Twilight yeah. started out as Buffy fan fiction. <gasps> oh my god, so, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, this okay. is a fascinating world. Yes, so people who anybody who looks down on fan fiction is out of touch with reality because a lot most most art is derivative almost all oh, yeah. art is derivative if you uh, nina nina paley is that her name she talks she's a big opponent of copyright mm -hmm. and the whole notion of it and how much and she and she does a lot of work just sort of exploring how much of our creative work is all built on the shoulders yeah. of the priors and she's got this great animation that shows statues that um start out like she shows modern statues and then she shows a previous statue and then a previous one and a previous one and a previous one and if you look at art in general how it has built upon the art of past and how it's just such an integral 
na- it's the integral nature of creativity to build upon that that came before it mm-hmm. and make it better or different or modified or what specialized mm-hmm. and things like that. It's it's part of creativity. And for people who say that copyright is necessary to keep from stifling creativity, they have it completely backwards. It's totally backwards. backwards yes. yes. There's a great organization called the OTW, the Organization for Transformative Works, and it was started by fans and creators. I mean, many fans are also creators. Sure. Um, that, uh, were, were, that wanted a way, a legal framework, um, to, and a public framework to fight back against the, what are you are doing? You doing with the I, I was just curious how much of my hand gestures our people could see, so I pulled up the cam, and I'm like, yep, they see all this. I, I could be masturbating my head, and they, they see it. Wait, yeah. how do you Go do ahead. that? Tell me okay. more about that. Anyway. Is that no. like... Uh, oh. You guys, I'm saying don't something derail. interesting. I'm so, for we, God's derailed, sake. we derailed. We derailed. Sabriel, let's get back on topic. I don't even. We're not going to change the name of the show to "But I Digress." Okay, yeah. look. <laughs> the they wanted a legal and a public down. framework to fight back against legal challenges to fan works to be like, no, look, copyright is bullshit in a lot of ways, and fandom is not infringing on your rights. Um, so the organization for transformative works, look it up. Okay. Uh, Let's put a link to it in the show. If you okay. can email me a link to that. Certainly. If I forget, because I'll forget to look it up. Definitely. Voice. And as as far as entitlement goes, let's talk a bit about entitlement. Heteronormativity is the way that the world has been structured forever <laughs> and the way that culture has been structured forever. So if you think you're entitled to your straight characters and their straight portrayal and to never have your worldview challenged, that is also a form of entitlement and hallelujah sister give me a high five yeah and so if <laughs> fandom if you think that that slash fans are entitled some of it is just having fun but some of it is taking back a little piece of culture and putting a queer spin on it and if we can't do that on the internet in our own corners then where where can we do it Yes. There's uh, I hear you. Slash, I am with you. You, slash is you a way have sold of me. I think you won this debate. You yes, won the debate. I'm sorry. You. The person on the internet who <laughs> made some comments and can't reply and can't, can't defend, defend yourself, yourself, you lost. I'm sorry. Someone on the uh, internet is wrong. <laughs> someone on the internet is wrong. No. Um actually I'm what? gonna tell I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave a reply to this person to let them know that we discuss their comments on the show if they want to okay. you know, they Good. can reply either on Reddit or here or on our web page or whatever they should yeah. call so, in yeah they, call they, into the show i don't i don't know if they're actually listening to us live i mean the reason they discovered this is because they follow the supernatural subreddit uh-huh. and i linked to the show because right. we talked so much about supernatural i right. thought they might be want to know about it so and they did because yes. they were responded yes yeah a little not, not, not as much as i would like but yeah yeah there you go so i think we've beat this to death uh but i'm, I'm we still have half an hour for the other topics oh yes Dale. we have we have more stuff i don't know are you leaving now or later lauren no later i'm gonna i'm okay. gonna milk this all right yeah. <laughs> we're milking I love it flaming fruit. flaming fruit we'll be milking it when we come back please stay tuned <laughs> welcome back good morning having i hope you're having a happy sa- sunday morning and you probably are since you're skipping church <laughs> That's usually a good sign for a happy Sunday. But if you're listening on the podcast and you go to church, we're okay with that too. I, I guess. I guess the we're live okay show is so, so much more fun though. It's so li- like if we, you log in and watch us. We are living. We are live and let live, folks. So if you really want to go to church, I guess you can. <laughs> and we're not. Dale gonna isn't stop going to use. You. It isn't going to violate the nap to keep you from going <sighs> right, to church. Right. I'll just scowl at you. <laughs> I'll just give you my resting bitch face. <laughs> That's the worst I'll do. Uh, yeah. So, um. You do not have a resting bitch face, Dale. I'm sorry. Your face is way too nice. Oh, no. You have I'll resting work on that. nice guy face. I'll yeah, work on earlier it. you were talking about how you didn't like the camera being so close or like there's too much of you, but no, you, you've got it. You're, uh, you're a good looking guy. Some days, and then other days I look 15 years older. I look 20 pounds heavier. I look at myself in the cam and I'm like, when I'm naked and looking in the mirror, I don't look that fat. But this thing, they say the camera adds 20 pounds it, or something. It totally does. Yeah, Guys, no, I'm really I, not the, as fat as I look on the if cam. If you've ever I, seen, the stage also know. adds 20 pounds. If you ever watch somebody on stage and then meet them oh, afterwards, yeah. it's like, wow, you're really skinny. Huh. Yeah. Costumes, I don't know. Yeah. I, don't know I just know that, like, I've now Lauren is trying to pay me a compliment. It's made me self-conscious. <laughs> look, how, look how I am. I've got so many issues. 
So uh, let's move on from Dale's issues. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just leaving the cam in the same camera this whole time. Here, here's Dale Cam again, real quick. Ta da! There he is, Dale Cam, and it looks dark and bad. So, so all right. So for those of you watching on the cam too, we we did have a visit from Neil, and he uh, oh yeah, he would probably appreciate the next topic. Although I don't know yeah. if we're done with the. Sh- I think we are the we, supernatural I, shipping shenanigans. I did have the next topic is, is whether or not circumcision hurts gay men more. Yeah, but um, the thing is, I haven't. It's I can't remember exactly the details of that, and I don't want to. I can't spend time reading up on it. Oh, so I want to. I'm, and, and, I'm not, curious, and, and I want to talk about this while you're here because Antigone brought this up, and that's she how did. I know about it. She shared it on Flaming Freedom. So thank you, Antigone of Sex Lies and Anarchy. We'll link to your show, but um, it's a a gay a gay bar was cited for discrimination for not letting an LGBT person in. <laughs> They yes. were they were cited for LGBT discrimination. Now here's the thing, and I think this is a fascinating topic because what happened essentially it's it, it's hard to say is absolutely what happened because it's like different stories and the details are probably lost in translation and mm. and so forth. But uh, there's a bear bar, and a bear mm-hmm. is just a term for a certain type of gay man who's kind of hyper masculine, sometimes uh, usually large framed. Maybe hairy, uh, frequently hairy. Beards are popular. Um, the, the the sort of really masculine traits are popular with bears, like, and, a, like a biker, like a right. You know, and then big imagine biker sort of kind of man. Exactly. Yeah. And then imagine sort of the the uh, the difference the uh, difference between say someone who is called a twink, which is a guy who's kind of not a, not a little bit more androgynous looking. Young. Kind of a pretty boy yeah. who's got very clean cut hair and wears nice, clean tight fitting clothes, and and he's he's a little more of like your metrosexual type. Although metrosexual specifically means straight, but this is a gay version of a metrosexual, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, that's a different type where someone who's a little more comfortable with. Uh, I don't want to say no. That's a bad word to say. They're comfortable with. It's just a difference of preferences. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so um, it's uh, for some reason I'm getting a little more tinniness. Hold on. Yeah, I, I'm getting that too. I, I don't know if you you didn't make any adjustments to the game, but anyway. Um, uh, no, it's just something about the it's something about the air conditioner. So uh, yes. it's too hot. Sorry, folks. It's going to hurt. <laughs> We're just going to deal with it. So but anyway, so there's different there's these different styles, and people have different preferences and types and things like that. And and so this guy, but anyway, a drag queen shows up at the bear bar, and they're saying that they couldn't match him with his ID because he has an ID that didn't look like him. And they're like, mm. this isn't going to work. You know, they're worried about liability. This is the, the bar. This is the bar story. And then this person goes and sues them for LGBT discrimination. Right. Uh, and, and here's the thing. There were, there were some people that theorized that he was actually like some, that the bar was, that had some kind of like problem with their liquor license or they were letting underage people oh, I in. Think they, I think they may and, have, have, have been under, yeah, and so under like scrutiny this, about that. So they were not taking chances. Right. And it's a very good, we don't know for sure, but it's a very high likelihood, very possible thing that they were just concerned about the liability of letting someone in who they yeah. couldn't verify their ID. Yeah. I mean, look at any bar you go to, if you don't look really old <laughs> they will scrutinize your id and be like okay because they're afraid of losing their liquor license especially organizations that are even a little bit controversial because a lot of places don't like them and they'll use that as a way to shut them down yeah right they'll say well we can't shut them down because they're a gay bar so we'll shut them down because they didn't over liquor license issues right it's, right. A, tool, it's a weapon they can use against people they don't like and that's that's the thing about this that's, is why I'm a libertarian. That's what laws are that's weapons. That's the deal with victimless crime laws in general yeah. is you can enforce you enforce them selectively because you have to because victimless crimes are everywhere. So you have to pick and choose. Right. So you pick the people you don't like. And it serves your interests. Like if the, the thing with the drug war it ramped up big time when hippies were protesting the war. We'll say, well, we can't get them for free speech, <laughs> but we can pick these people who we don't like their speech. And and find something that most of them are doing and start cracking down and we can just silence them that way. Mm-hmm. So so that's the problem with all these all these laws. Every time you make a new law, like be cautious. Every time you make a new law, you're giving a weapon to a bureaucrat to yeah. attack people they don't like mm-hmm. over things that are not illegal. Yeah. So so and I think that's sort of this. I think this, this is maybe someone who was uh, annoyed with the bar and said, oh, I've got this legal weapon I can use. LGBT discrimination laws. 
yeah. right? Which are meant to protect LGBT people. And now this bar, it's a gay bar, is under threat over probably something that is complete BS because it's a legal weapon that someone can use because they were personally offended by something they did, which was probably justified at the time. So we'll definitely link to the article. And this person, yes. though, his name is, um, his last name is Marzano. Um, he claims to not be transgender or anything no, like no, that. You know, it's not he's drag not, for a costume right, party or something It might have just like been that. something yeah. like that. But at the same time, like, I really want to know what his background is. Who, like, I does do, he have yeah. a history of drag uh, stuff, like performing I, I, in drag? My or, impression is I mean, no. That yeah, my impression so, is this person doesn't even do drag usually. This was an unusual occasion. Right. I, I almost yeah. feel like this is some kind of, like, if maybe he's an informant or something. Like, I, I really want to mm. do some research and find out who this person is because I feel like there's some kind of like greater thing going on. You have not right? in the actual reason that article. That there's something I, going on. You know, yeah. I, I'm just. I, I want to be honest. I'm just speaking from my gut with ignorance because I don't know. But my, I've seen this. I've seen pettiness between people. And I remember when I started out, when I was first realizing I was gay and I was meeting gay people for the first time, I got this sense of this amazing brotherhood and sisterhood, whatever, but mostly mm-hmm. brotherhood because that's who I was hanging out right. with at the time. Right. And I got this sense of this amazing brotherhood that these people, we are in this together. We're getting prose- persecuted and we really were a lot at that time. I'm talking decades ago. I don't want to <laughs> think about that too much. Uh, we really were. And so we felt this kind of brotherhood, like we had each other's backs kind of. Mm-hmm. But then it wasn't long before I started seeing pettiness. And I thought, wow, there's still pettiness. There's That's still kind of how it is. And yeah, yeah, everybody is. There's still yeah. people are you seeing, still are petty to other people because of some little personal difference. Petty within the LGBT community yeah. or yeah. Yes. Okay. Or anywhere. Well, he, yeah. Like, and, that and, and, brotherhood is not really there. <laughs> not that much. You know, well, maybe, the point is we're all different and we, we, have, we have normal human foibles. We're not, it's, it's, and, and, and part of this is what, part of what I want to think about with this is that there is, there's, there's this bar, which is sort of tailors to bears, it does. which is and, not my thing, by the way. Let me I'm also, not into that. can I add that they actually have a uh, dress code that forbids any kind of high heeled shoes, wigs, or just appearance alterating, uh, altering. That wasn't a word. Um, okay. you know, makeup, strong perfumes, things like that. Like there, there's a specific thing that they want to have there and it's their property and they have the uh, right to, to choose I had what they want. That there's actually, yeah, there was a very formal thing here. So I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of curious why, if that person, like this person knew, was just challenging that, like right, he was annoyed with that. Right. And here's that's the other thing. That's why I want to know. He was like, Oh, there's a gay bar. I'm going to go in. Cause I want I, I wonder now though when, Laura, when Lauren mentions that out. and the fact that he made a lawsuit about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he might have been picking a fight because these people are, are, certain, are, are catering to a certain type and he feels like every bar should be the, exactly the same as every other bar <gasps> and nothing should be... <laughs> oh, I've got to run. We'll be back, folks, except uh, for Lauren. Flaming Freedom. Stay I'll see tuned. you next week, though. Bye. Welcome back, folks, to Flaming Freedom. Good morning. This is your host, Dale. And Sabriel. Lauren will one day be able to stay with us for the entire show, but work issues are uh, not allowing that at the moment. It will change before too terribly long. So don't lose heart. There's hope. In the meantime, <laughs> Sabriel and I will be able to hog the We'll mics. carry on. Yeah. So um, here's a statement by someone that I think is interesting in this article on the reason.com. And I find this really maddening as somebody who has been fighting against the illogical slippery slope arguments that acknowledging and respecting transgender people will result in absurd outcomes like men faking it in order to peep on women in the bathroom. It's a stupid, irrational fear. And now we have a man who is not transgender, nevertheless using the law to punish a business for not letting him in. And we have a state agency in Colorado declaring that a subculture within the gay community is inherently sexist for having a preference for masculinity. This case is a good demonstration as to why it's so important to hold a hard line on the right to freedom of association. Yeah. I'm with them on this. Totally agree. The Wrangler should have the, that's the name of the club, I assume. The Wrangler should have the right to pursue whatever customer demographic it wants for its bar. And if the community finds it significantly discriminatory, they can use social pressures to push for change. Like boycotts, for instance. And and then this is, see, frequently the subjects of, the subject of discrimination comes up and a lot of people will go, Dale, you're a gay man. Why would you not want discrimination laws protecting you? Yeah. Because one day they're going to bite you in the ass. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it is, again, it's, it's a weapon 
that can be used by someone in a dis- in a discriminatory fashion. Uh, ironically enough, mm-hmm. I mean, here's a case where this is a gay bar that caters to a particular particular kind of clientele. And and why do we really want every place ever to be completely generic? No. Like, do we not want like gay people are not a monolithic unified thing. Like I said, I, I, I mentioned how I felt like we were this brotherhood. I mean, and, and on a certain level, we are. I think we have that sense of we're, we're suffering the same kinds of persecution regardless of our types. But we are different people with different tastes and different interests. There are lots of gay men who are types that I'm not attracted to and that they're probably not attracted to me either or vice versa. And, uh, and then we have different interests like sir gay men who are like sports. I don't <laughs> Right. There's, uh-huh. a, there's a subreddit on, on uh, Reddit called Gay Bros. Uh-huh. Right. And it kind of is what you think it is. It's masculine types of gay people, gay mm-hmm. men. And, and that's what that's about. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't like drag queens or that they disapprove of people who di- have different interests than them. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that that's what that particular subreddit is about. Gay Bros is going to get sued. For having <laughs> what? Right. N- next gay bros yeah. will be sued for not. Well, it's like it's allowed. like if you were going to a baseball game. Let's say let, let, let's say some gay guys go to a baseball game, and there's some other gay guys that want to watch show tunes, and they're like, hey, this stadium would be a great place for show tunes. Mm-hmm. We could do show tunes over there. We could put a screen up. I think it'd be like you know what? I like show tunes too, but at the moment. I came to a baseball place uh-huh. to watch baseball. Yeah. And this is a baseball stadium. Down the street is a theater, and we can go there, and we probably will tomorrow night, <laughs> to watch show tunes. Yeah. It, it doesn't mean, because we're here at a baseball stadium which is devoted to baseball, that we don't also like show tunes, mm-hmm. and that we will go to a place devoted to, play, to, to shows mm-hmm. and to plays and musicals and so forth when, when we're in the mood for that. Like, it doesn't mean that you disapprove of the other thing because you have a place de- devoted to a particular interest. And really, even if you do disapprove, don't you have the right to freaking disapprove? You do. You do. Yeah. But, but I, it, it bugs me that that's even the presumption, that, that yeah. they're somehow anti these other things just because that bar is not for that at that time. Yeah. <laughs> they, they might even decide to have a night for certain things or something like that. Or they might not. It doesn't matter. As long, you can always do that. If someone tries to prevent you from doing the thing you want to do in the space that you make for that and are willing to pay for to make it happen, mm-hmm. then I would have an issue with it because because that's none of their business. Yep. But to say that this but this bar that is a bear bar has to also be a drag queen bar. How can you please everybody all the time? You can't do that. Nope. You just can't do that. I like the fact that I can be in a baseball. Well, I'm not in a baseball mood. I have, <laughs> I have a little. I enjoyed baseball a little bit at one time. But who knows? I love that. <laughs> Once I could upon be, a time, Dale enjoyed a baseball game. <laughs> yeah. I love that I could be in a baseball mood and I can go to a baseball place. Mm-hmm. I can be in a movie mood and I can go to a movie place. I can be in a drag mood and go watch drag show. I don't like that very often, but I have enjoyed it on occasion. Uh-huh. A rarer occasion for me. I like that I can go to a certain place that's for a certain thing and enjoy what I want. And I don't want every place to be the same. Yeah. That would, that would destroy choices. Freedom should be about choices. Yeah. And this is really destroying choice by trying to say that every gay bar has to be exactly the same and has to let everything happen there and cater to everyone who wants whatever they want. You just can't please everybody all the time. Nope. Yeah. So that, that's my beef with this. And and there we go. Circumcision. <laughs> it's too bad Neil's not here for this. Uh, or maybe it's good that he isn't. Because he actually gets so upset about this sometimes, it's almost like a PTSD response. Yeah. Like, he, 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 he gets up, he gets, he's, an, he's an intactivist. Right. He's a big activist for intact, for not mutilating the genitals of boys. Mm-hmm. And I, I, am, I am as well. Uh, he's probably more so than I am, although over time I've gotten more... I've gotten more like Neil, if anything. Mm-hmm. Like I've gotten to the point now where when I see a circumcised penis, I, I go, ugh. Oh, oh, dear. Like, I just feel bad for the person immediately. I'm yeah. like, ugh. It's not as attractive to me. Mm-hmm. It's less attractive over time as I've gotten to appreciate, appreciate intact penises more. <laughs> and, and, uh, and what this guy is saying, he's a gay man. He says that it's a little bit worse for gay men in a way because, in, in a way, straight men don't really ever know what they're missing to, uh-huh. as much. Right, because they're only with women, right? And like their penis is kind of the only one they ever known, they've yeah. ever known, and they ever will know. Whereas a gay man, you know, very likely is going to 
interact with Date a non-circumcised a penis. Right. Right. And get to talk to the person, get to play with it, see what it feels like, have it in their mouth, and really get a feel. <laughs> like I enjoy it. I've I've done oral, and I I enjoy it more on an uncircumcised penis. There's just mm. so much more to do. Mm. It's like a playground mm. with a whole bunch of things to ride instead of just the one ride. Mm-hmm. Like it's like you can. It's more interesting, honestly. Okay. And you can see the reaction you're getting from things, mm-hmm. right? And that's cool, yeah. too, right? That you know, There's definitely sensitivity there that's not there for these other penises. Right. So I, he, that's, this, that's what this guy's saying. And he is actually Jewish. He's wearing a shirt. Uh, a Jewish shirt. Right. So he is, um, it's, it's got, he's got the Star of David on his shirt. I can't read exactly what it says, but um, he is Jewish, and he still opposes... Uh, th- this is an, a, a slightly controversial area, like the whole notion of freedom of religion. Mm-hmm. But, is, but I don't think your, th- I don't think that your, the freedom of religion should ever uh, uh, override the freedom of a baby not to have parts of its body cut off. Yeah. Right. Yes. Th- th- we we draw limits right. on freedom of religion. But right. Yes, you have freedom of religion until you hurt someone, especially an innocent child. Just like all rights, you have right. that right. There were except- there were religions that sacrificed people. Yeah. That would not be a freedom of religion that we would recognize today because it violates laws that have to do with yes. not being murdered. Right. <laughs> and not cutting off pieces of babies, I think, should fall into there as well. Yeah. There's a line, and that should be over that line. Yeah. So I don't think, I mean, in one, now if you want to make it part of your religion that when they turn 18, then, you, you know, with your approval, mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're still a practicing member and you want and you feel enthusiastic about it, then you can decide to do it. Uh-huh. It still bothers me because they've been brainwashed from since they were a little kid to believe in this well, religion. Well, at this, but in this I, day I and age, not, it's a lot harder yeah. to claim brainwashing unless you're in a cult without the internet. It's uh, a lot. It's it, it's gotten it's harder and harder to control yeah, a child's input. True, but it's still there's still there's still influences on them. But I don't want to fight that with laws. Right. Obviously. My point is, I want to fight it with more speech. I just want to reach out to them, get their ear as much as I can, and pro- provide an alternate. Right. Viewpoint to the insanity that I consider religion. To so be. is this guy <laughs> trying to reform uh, his his synagogue or whatever so that they don't practice circumcision on infants anymore? Like, what is he saying? I think he would like to see it stop. Yes, I think he would like to see it stop. I would like to see it as long as there's a state around. I'd like to see it be outlawed. Honestly, yeah. I think if, if there are laws, I mean, as long as there are laws against assault, um, uh any kind of, like it's it's a it's a really horrific form of assault to cut yeah. off a piece of someone's body. Yeah. And if they're an infant, that yeah. should make it all the all the worse. Yeah. Like if you think if you think we need if you think it's especially bad, like I think it's as bad it's as, it's really bad to rape someone. It's especially bad to rape a child. Mm-hmm. And if you think it's bad to cut a piece of someone's body off, I would say it's especially bad to cut off the piece of a of a child. Yeah. So. So it, it just makes it that much worse. Yeah. Again, and we I, see it as totally yeah. innocuous just because we're, we're socialized. It's part of culture. Is right. That this it's, is what people do. And then, oh, freedom of religion. No, no, not when you're talking about cutting a piece of a baby off. Yeah. Your religion doesn't trump that. Yeah. That freedom trumps your religious freedom. Yep. <laughs> should be, it should be straightforward, but it's not. And that's why the subject keeps coming up. Thanks for joining us, Sabrielle, and I hope you listen to us next week. Thank you for inviting me. Listen to us next week from 10 a.m. to noon on the Liberty Radio Network. This has been Flaming Freedom.